A warm welcome to all our viewers. Welcome to Women Take Over at Elevate. Today, we are going to talk about you as a woman. It is Women's Month, and I want to talk under the topic that says, you are your greatest investment. Let us pray shortly. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We commit this service. We commit this ministration unto your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to say to you, I am from Women Aflame Foundation, which is a non-profit organization that looks at championing the growth and development of women in the sub-Saharan -Sub Africa. We believe an empowered woman empowers the world. So the thrust of our organization is to see us women taking our rightful positions in all aspects. I'm talking in equality, equitable opportunities, safety and leadership in the society. Thank you for joining us. One of the things that we need to look at as women is that there is so much that has been spoken about us being marginalized. There are things that we have experienced in our lives. There is a whole host of events, some that have been painful, some that are untold stories that we are not able to share with other people. But we thank the Lord that we are gradually evolving. We now understand our rights. We now understand our position in the Lord and all the things that we need to do. Today, as we speak about you as your greatest investment, I want you where you are. I know most of us are in a lockdown season and you are so downhearted. You want to throw in the towel. You are giving up. You are in a discouraged state. But I'm here today to say, pick yourself up and understand who you are as a child of God and understand your purpose and understand what the Lord has created you to be. Today we are going to talk more about the life of a woman in the Bible. Many of us know about her who is Esther. Esther was an orphan. Esther had gone through a whole host of things. Many of us can relate to a life of an orphan. Many of us can relate to a life of death, experiencing death in the family, experiencing death in your career, experiencing death in your education, in your financial life, in your, in your relationships. And I want to say to you today, begin to value, begin to put a price tag on who you are. Begin to put to, to, to develop yourself and structure yourself and package yourself, not only for a church setup, but for the marketplace. Begin to package yourself such that somebody who meets you, I'm talking your boas, somebody who meets you out there does not see you as a liability, but they see you as an asset. So that's what I want us to position ourselves. Can I remind you again, allow me to remind you that you are a woman every day. You are a woman every second. You are a woman every hour. And you are very important. You are valuable. You are valuable in your society. The minute we begin to lose away the orphanage, the Hadassah mentality, that's when we are able to stand. So I'm here, I'm carrying a message that says, shake off the dust, pick yourself up, and wear that strength, wear the blanket of strength in your life. Before we go any further, I want us to read from the word of God in the book of Esther chapter 2. 
There are things that I want us to pick up on. We can relate to many of us are in the corporate space. Some of us are in the business space. Whatever condition that you are in, maybe you are seated at home. You think there is no plan. You are seated at home. I always talk about internal conversations that we make as women or as any other human being. Whatever you tell yourself matters most. Whatever you see yourself as matters most. When you look at the book of Esther, the Bible says, I will pick on a few scriptures that I want us to look at. There was a time before when Vashiti was, was moved away. I want to talk about these things. Vashiti was a queen. Vashiti had her own time. She had her own opportunity. She had her own season of being a queen. But we see things happening in a life where she had to be re replaced. Listen to this, child of God. What happens in chapter 2 of Esther, verse 2. The Bible says the personal attendance of the king suggests that let us search the empire to find beautiful young virgins for the king. Listen, opportunity will always present itself in one way or another. And I want to say in the season that you are in, do not miss that opportunity. Many of us have lost our set time. Many of us have lost our season. Can I remind you of a few things that we can relate to? In soccer, many people, you will understand that you knew a certain soccer player. It was their season. We spoke about them. We celebrated them. But as they grew up, their season began to decline. So it is in life. There are seasons of life. Opportunities will present themselves in your life. And I want to understand this. They said, let us search. A search is always there in various platforms. A search will always locate you. Okay, let's move along. And then what happened, people, a search happened in that season. People began to look around who can be the next Vashiti, who can be the next queen. And what am I talking about here today? I'm talking about your dream. I'm talking about your talents, your potentials, all that you are set to do. I'm talking about your purpose, finding your purpose. Let's see how an orphan girl found her purpose because many times we blame it on our upbringing we blame it on who fathered us. We blame it on whoever left us in life. We blame it on our relationships or on our backgrounds. But today I want you to see when opportunity is presented, how Esther responds to this opportunity. What am I saying to you, woman, today? It is important how you respond to to your circumstances. How you respond to your circumstances is very, very important. Listen here. Here is a man that is called Mordecai. Mordecai, the Bible says, was from the tribe of Benjamin and was a descendant of Kish and Shimei. This is not my story. My story says this man, Mordecai, had a very beautiful and lovely young cousin, Hadassah, who was also called Esther. When her father and mother died, Mordecai adopted her into his family and raised her as his own daughter. Most of the times when you are offended, when people around you walk away from you, we always think we have nothing to do any longer. I want to challenge you at home to say, find a Mordecai or let Mordecai find you. Cooperate with your Mordecai as you are journeying through 
in this life, in this season, it is important that you find a Mordecai of your life. Mordecai in this instance can be a man and a woman in your life. Who is there to guide you? Who is there to mentor you? Do you know that many people do not have mentors in life. Many people do not have coaches in life. Many people do not have collaborations. And I'm here to say to you today, it's important to have a Mordecai of your life. This Mordecai adopted her into his family, meaning she's coming to, to move from whatever life that she was used to. She is coming to adapt. She is coming to adapt to the life of Mordecai, to the family lifestyle, to the way of doing things in this family. How many of us are ready to change? How many of us are ready to embrace a change in their life? Change may not be comfortable, especially when you are to be raised by somebody else who never raised you. When somebody has to speak over your life, it is important to know who is speaking over your life. And you need to be able to adapt, to adjust and align. So, what we are talking about now, remember we are in Esther 2. I want to challenge every woman. Most of us, we are home and some of the people in our workplaces. Set aside time, invest time in reading the book of Esther. You will pick quite a number of nuggets that will help you in your journey as a woman. Listen to this. The Bible says Esther in verse 18 of chapter 2 along with many other women. What are we learning here from the statement that says along with many other women? We live in a world that is full of competition. There is so much of competition. You need a certain level of maturity that will cause you to understand that you are in a competition. So in a competition, whatever comes out is how much you have invested in you. It's how much you have labored to build, to package you as a woman. In the workplace, there is competition. In ministry, there is competition. Wherever you are, in relationships, there are competitions. So what we are striving for, we are striving for a well-rounded woman. We are striving for a complete woman. A woman who is savvy in different topics. A woman who understands herself. A woman whom the Bible says she is able, she loves at days to come. This is the kind of woman that we are looking for. But you cannot work, you cannot fight, you cannot be in a competition where you are not ready for it. Let's not be mistaken. You cannot enter a competition that you are not prepared for. So there is a processing. There is a preparation process that you need to go through in this journey of life. In every aspect of your life. That is why it is important that you document things. You write down your vision. You write down those things that you aspire to be. Gone are the days of only dreaming. Gone are the days of only talking about it. It is the time of action. It is a time that you need to rise up, to pick yourself up. And I want to say to you, who, you who thinks I am Hadassah, you who thinks you have written yourself off, sometimes it's not people that write us off. We write ourselves off. We are the ones that begin to say, this is not for me. This is, I can't do one, two, three. But I want to say to you today, before we go, we delve deeper into what needs to be done to invest into yourself. I want to provoke a spirit that says, I can do it. I am able to do it. I can fail today. I want to say to you, we do not fail as children of God. We don't fail. You get a feedback 
of how to improve and do things better. Listen to this. Esther, with many others, was brought to the king's harem at Fortress of Susa, and she was placed in her guy's care. Listen and look at, I want you to observe the number of people that were involved in her developmental journey. It's important to understand that on your own, you cannot make it. One of the things, one of the skills that we need to develop is networking skills. Most of us, we are not able to network with other people. You, you, you pride yourself in shutting yourself indoors. You pride yourself in sitting at home and doing nothing. I want to challenge you about my own background. I was never born in a family that's well up according to the standards of this world. But I have this go-getter spirit in me. One that says, I will go all out. I will ask questions in order for me to reach my goals. I have a personal vision and I understand I have reached that point in my life to say on my own, I cannot make it. I need Mordecai's in my life. I need her guys in my life. And the Bible says in Esther chapter 2 verse 9, her guy was very impressed with Esther. The question is, by living in Mordecai's home, it means there are values that were instilled in her. There are things that Mordecai embedded in her life that made her attract favor. Many of us, it is our characters that disadvantage us. It is the way we present ourselves in the workplace, in our home, in the church. We, 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 we end up attracting disfavor. And I want to say to you, work on those areas of your life that make you not to be favored, that make you it to be not impressive. It's important, it's important woman, that whenever you rock up in a place, people, you attract favor. You attract those that are saying, hmm, this woman, wow, this woman, the, whatever comes out of her mouth, you, you have this, this aura in you that says, that, that attracts people, that hooks people on you. And the Bible says, therefore, he treated her kindly. He quickly ordered a special menu for her. Remember, we are talking that you are your greatest investment. There is a menu that is set for you. You don't eat anything when you are in your developmental journey. There is a special menu that speaks to your interpersonal skills. There is a special menu that speaks to your soft skills. There is a menu that speaks to your technical skills. So it's important that you are able to package all these things together to say, what do I need? Remember, you are competing with many other girls. And when you begin to look at your competition, it is very tight. You must always look at these beauty pageants where you see that competition is tight. There are people that are around you. Listen to this. Remember, she was put under the care of her guy. And then later on in the day, she is also assigned. She is also assigned. Okay, before the assigning of this, remember I spoke about a special menu and then there were she was also provided with beauty treatments. In this case, I'm not talking about your physical beauty. I'm talking about positioning you for the marketplace. I'm talking about positioning you for that which you want to become. I'm talking about 
packaging your business, packaging yourself as a person, as a wife, as whatever you want to become. There are beauty treatments that are beyond the physical beauty. Yes, we need physical beauty as well. You must be presentable. Then she was also assigned, my God, she was also assigned seven maids specially chosen for the king's palace the people that work in a king's palace if you look at the african country where there is mostly kings or in england when you there is royalty there are so many rules people are taught on how to hold their handbags you are told how to talk there is a dress code that you need to speak we are talking of a woman that had an orphan mentality that was never used to that kind of a life she had to cooperate she had to respond and i'm here to charge you today that in your rising in investing on you as a person you need to be able to transition into royalty you need a mindset of royalty you need to grow there are people that are assigned to you and guess what with the learning again, brethren, there are things that you need to understand. There is informal and formal learnings. The seven maids also have different responsibilities. So focus is also important. When you are focused on building you as a brand, when you are focusing on, on, on making you up, this is the time where certain things must be left off. You need to do, I always tell people, you need to do a SWOT analysis of yourself. An S standing for your strengths, identify what are your strengths and a w being your weaknesses what are your weaknesses what is it that you are not good at what is it that you need to build yourself up on what are opportunities that are presented to you being in a palace being trained by certain people assigned people in your life is an opportunity that is presented do not waste or lose your opportunity then there are threats what are the threats around you what are those things that are threatening that which you are becoming so i want us to look at all those things in our lives and say it and then the bible says he moved her her guy had to move esther in your developmental journey in investing on yourself there are stages there are phases that you need to go through as a child of god and the bible says her maids these seven maids had to put her in her blood a best place in harem so these are the things that you need to look at and i want you to look at yourself sit down go back and look at what are the things that i need to develop myself on as we're looking at saying you are your greatest investment you are your greatest investment as you are your greatest investment which areas of your life your your aspirations your passion that which you are good at your passion you cannot be good at but it's things that you can work on i always believe that as a woman we are wired to do whatever we aspire to be we have we have enough help we are a generation we are a society that is loaded with so much content with so much information the question is what are we ready to do i want to say development talks to growth you can't separate growth and development and it talks to changes in your life and some of which are uncomfortable some which are unpleasant it talks to sacrifices join me in our next episode as we unpack this journey of development thank you